Hello, I'm Jason Howland. Welcome to Speaking of Health, a place to help you learn how to live a longer and healthier life. Every day we take an average of 20,000 breaths. Our lungs are one of the largest organs in the body, and they do a lot of work all day and night keeping us alive. Our guest today is Dr. Sonny Kosa. He is a pulmonologist at Mayo Clinic Health System. Dr. Kosa, thanks for joining us today. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me, Jason. Well, uh, as I mentioned, you are a pulmonologist. Mm -hmm. For those that don't know, can you explain what pulmonology is? Sure. Uh, pulmonology, basically, we're basically breathing specialists. Um, we deal with a lot of uh, breathing diseases. Um, everything pretty much from here to here um, that involves the breathing tubes. There's certain diseases that hand, uh, deal with the breathing tubes, like asthma, has to do with the resistance of the airways. Um, things can block the breathing tubes, uh, tumors, uh, pneumonias, mucus, things like that can also affect the breathing. Um, other things that we deal with is actually the vessels of the lung, which also are kind of interconnected. Um, there's lung diseases that also deal with that, such as pulmonary hypertension is one of them. Uh, blood clots can affect the vessels of the lung. That's also related. Um, we also deal with uh, the architecture of the lung as well. Uh, things like fibrosis or scarring can affect that, and we deal with that as well. And sometimes forgotten is actually the breathing muscles. So we deal with lung mechanics and the breathing muscles as well. That's also kind of tied in. And as well as the lining of the lung. Uh, you probably heard of asbestosis and asbestos mm -hmm. that also affects the lining of the lung. We also deal with the diseases such as that as well. So basically anything that deals with uh, breathing. Pretty that's, much. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Well, everyone has to be able to breathe in order to live. Mm -hmm. So the lungs, they're a pretty important uh, organ that we have in our bodies. So let's start out with the basics. How exactly do the lungs work? Sure. Uh, kind of describe it like uh, we, we basically breathe by negative pressure. So um, when we take that breath in, uh, it creates kind of a vacuum effect. Uh, air goes kind of down our breathing tubes um, all the way down to our lower airways and at the very end of our airways is actually these little tiny little sacs called alveoli. Uh, the way I kind of like to describe it is like it's uh, grapes. Uh, essentially grapes are very small. You can't see it with your own naked eye though. Um, their surface area is amazing. It's uh, probably the surface area about half a tennis court. So we're talking about um, you know about 100 square meters. Um, in addition, there's about a thousand vessels wrapped around each of them. So uh, this kind of interconnection allows you for gas exchange. So you breathe in air, which really you're after is oxygen, and you breathe out the wasted gas, which is carbon dioxide, and that kind of balance takes care of uh, the acid in our body as well. So that's really how it, it, it's a pretty amazing structure. Yeah, it does sound like it. Very minute, you're saying, but also uh, very intricate. Very intricate and very delicate. Easily injured. <laughs> well, uh, today we are talking about... Uh, uh, I guess it could be described as an injury to the lung, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, mm -hmm. also known as COPD. That's what correct. exactly is that? So COPD, just like how you described it, um, I'll kind of define the term itself. Uh, so COPD, the C stands for chronic, meaning that it's, uh, it's long-standing, it's often progressive. Uh, obstructed is a, is a form of obstructive lung disease, so it pretty much means that you can breathe in fine, but you can't get the air out. So you have airflow limitation, in a sense. Uh, and so it limits your ability to breathe out, uh, and then pulmonary disease. Um, there's often kind of, it's kind of grouped into two, but sometimes there's a lot of uh, um, variability and there's a lot of overlap between the two, but one group is, is called chronic bronchitis, and another group can be often known as emphysema, you probably heard those terms. Both mm -hmm. of those kind of are under, under the umbrella term of COPD. That's kind of what uh, encompasses COPD. It's actually, you know, worldwide over the last several years, it's probably the third in the top three leading cause of death. Um, and it's actually uh, uh, kills more people than lung cancer. Well, and a lot of people probably didn't realize that no, either. It's yeah. actually a systemic disease, and that's something that we've more come to know in the last several years. Um, COPD just does not affect the lungs. Uh, it, it's a syndrome. It affects the body. Uh, it can lead to muscle wasting. Uh, brain function is also c connected with this as well. So this is a lot of things that we don't understand, but it's actually a systemic disease. So what are some of the symptoms of COPD? Well, that's a good question. Uh, it can actually be very silent and subtle initially, and, uh, and one of the things we battle with is kind of diagnosing this early because people don't seek help. Uh, sure. When you're feeling good, why well, go to the doctor? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, earlier on, um, a cough, a lingering cough, and that's all it can be. Um, sometimes people brush it off as, oh, I just got a smoker's cough. And that can actually be a starting of COPD. It can actually be chronic bronchitis. You may actually already have COPD if you got that. Um, wheezing, that's another common thing. Um, shortness of breath, or just feeling short-winded. You know, some people, well, you know, I'm getting old. Um, you know, maybe age is getting to me. I'm getting a little short-winded. Can't maybe go up a flight of stairs anymore. Those kind of things can be very subtle, but those can all be related to that, early, early symptoms. 
uh, even chest tightness or chest pain can also be related to COPD. Now you mentioned emphysema and chronic uh, bronchitis. What, what's the difference between the two? Uh, the two, um, one's kind of a, what I describe as a clinical uh, term. So chronic bronchitis, you, you cough a number of certain months uh, uh, in two consecutive years. We kind of describe it as three, three months uh, and two years consecutively. It's kind of a diagnosis without even uh, you, you can just kind of diagnose it based on someone's history. It's like uh, having a chest cold for a long period of time. Basically, uh, and, and like I said, like, kind of like a smoker's cough that doesn't kind of go away, and it's mm -hmm. kind of a lingering cough, and it can come and go. Um, and emphysema is more of a, a descriptive term of the lung anatomy, but uh, basically it's pockets of air and lung destruction. So is COPD something that you're born with? Is it something that you, uh, you inherit, or is it something that you cause yourself? That's a good question. Uh, it actually can, you can be born with it. Uh, there's actually an uh, 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 uncommon genetic deficiency that actually causes emphysema, a specific type of emphysema. But actually the most, uh, most common cause or the most common risk factor uh, causing COPD is actually tobacco smoking. Um, it's probably about 80% uh, uh, of the people that we diagnose having COPD have a history of smoking. Now there's other, other causes as well that we can't ignore because actually it's, it's also present in the population it is occupational diseases. Some occupational diseases can cause COPD. And what do you mean uh, by that? Exposure to dust, inorganic dust as well as organic dust. Uh, secondhand smoke can also cause COPD mm -hmm. and actually some of the um, uh, after smoking a cigarette, the stuff that you expire or breathe out and actually it's just as toxic sometimes to someone else individual and mm -hmm. so that can actually lead to secondhand smoke exposure. That's a good question. Uh, so what do people need to do in order to keep their lungs healthy and avoid uh, getting COPD? Obviously, yeah. uh, you don't want to smoke, and if you do smoke, you want to quit, sure. right? Uh, one of the things we always worry about is, is COPD is actually, it's a progressive disease, and there's no cure for it. And so it's always difficult to deal with that once disease happens. So prevention is always a key. Obviously, it's easier said than done, but, you know, you really got to put down that cigarette. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's clearly an offending agent. It clearly can injure your lungs over quietly over years, and you can lose about 50% of your lung function before someone can actually get symptomatic mm -hmm. and notice it. So I think that's probably the mainstay of therapy from that standpoint. Uh, you were talking about how uh, the symptoms don't really occur until uh, the disease has progressed sure. quite a ways. Sure. So, so how do you go about uh, diagnosing someone in early stages mm -hmm. if they don't have any symptoms? I think, uh, you know, uh, realizing that, you know, even these subtle changes, whether it's a lingering cough, that can be a very early finding. Um, the fact that you even smoke, uh, you know, there, there's no real good correlation with the number of years you smoke and people getting disease. You can mm -hmm. take two different groups of people, both smoke in the same amount of duration, and actually they can present with different severity of disease. Catching them early is key, and if you get a lung testing done, uh, that can often detect it earlier. And how do you uh, test the lungs? Uh, there's a test called pulmonary function testing. It's also uh, a quick, uh, quick way. Spirometry is a, another term. And actually detects how good you are at breathing out. And that's kind of defines the disease. And so if there's any limitation on you breathing out, and that can be actually a, a way we can detect it earlier before even it gets to symptoms. So it's a form of a screening tool in a sense. And is that something that a pulmonologist does, or is that something someone can just uh, go into their family doctor? Uh, pulmonologists often interpret the, the reading, uh, mm -hmm. but actually a family doctor has access to this test and actually get the testing done as well. Great. Uh, so what are some of the dangers associated with COPD? So COPD-1, like I said, it's a progressive disease. Uh, so uh, all the functions of the lung uh, you can lose. Uh, so one is it's, it's actually, you know, it filters your air, humidifies your air. It actually protects you. It's a, uh, it's, a, it's a form of defense for your body. So if you lose that defense from lung injury from the COPD, uh, it can put you at risk of infections, pneumonias, um, uh, even the flu. Uh, and you're not just going to get sick. You get sicker than the average indi individual uh, from that. So it puts you at risk of infections. Um, one thing we always, wor we always worry about is lung cancer. Um, uh, you know, it surely increases your risk of lung cancer, just having COPD. Other things is oxygen. Uh, it impairs your ability to exchange oxygen. Like I said, that's one of the primary functions of our lung. So if you don't have enough oxygen or your lung's damaged, you may need supplemental oxygen. Uh, uh, on the flip side of that is the carbon dioxide, the, the gas that we breathe out. You have an impairment of you being able to breathe that out, so that's also impaired. And that affects your acid status of your body. That's, that's, that can be qu quite uh, life-threatening. So uh, COPD, is it, is it actual damage to the alveoli, is that what's happening? Uh, that's correct. Uh, so COPD, uh, again, depends on what form you have, but the emphysema can be actually damaged to the alveoli, can, can cause some scarring, can cause some inflammation and injury. Uh, again, like I said, smoke inhalation is a, is a big player on that standpoint. Chronic bronchitis, which is the kind of the other group that we describe, uh, that, can, that can affect the, uh, the tubing of the lung and cause a lot of inflammation and injury there more than the, than the architecture of the lung. So, uh, but there's, again, there's a lot of overlap. 
And what treatments are available? Is it once the damage is done, there's nothing you can do to revert back to a healthy lung? Well, and, and can someone be cured of COPD? It's hard to cure someone of COPD. Uh, it really depends on the offending agent. Oftentimes we deal with a disease that COPD is, is progressive. It's, it's essentially incurable. There are ways to manage it, um, and we can partly kind of reverse some aspects of it. Um, but a lot of the mainstays of therapy are inhalation uh, therapies, which are inhalers. Uh, sometimes steroids, sometimes uh, antibiotics can help as well, but you got to stop the offending agent. And I think I can't stress that enough. Um, uh, the other things that we have in our toolbox is uh, uh, obviously oxygen, uh, and that can affect. That can actually um, help with some of the side effects uh, of the COP, which is affects on the heart. And when you say oxygen, so that is someone that carries an oxygen tank with them. It mm -hmm. supplies more oxygen to their lungs than what they would normally breathe in? Uh, that's correct. So uh, just ambient air is not sufficient enough uh, uh, if you have a significant amount of damage to your lungs. Uh, and so providing supplemental oxygen can help uh, revert some of the effects uh, or injury to the lung, so, and, and especially the heart, actually, because the heart undergoes a lot of damage with COPD as well. And uh, what about surgery? Are there surgery options? Uh, there are in certain situations, and, and these are more uh, kind of rare or less common circumstances. There's actually lung volume reduction surgery that's available, especially in certain types of emphysema. People can have large bullae, as I described, large balls of pockets of air that take up a lot of space. And so there's some thought that if by removing that or resecting that, that can actually help your lung function. And so those are less common ways. Uh, people have done lung transplantation for um, specific types of emphysema. So depending on the cause of it, uh, there are ways, uh, there are uh, there is lung transplantation that's available. And what about uh, pulmonary rehabilitation? Pulmonary rehabilitation is, is really a, another good tool we have in our toolbox. It's actually, uh, the idea behind it is actually strengthening the breathing muscles. Uh, and that actually um, allows you to go a little bit further. So you feel less short of breath. Uh, and actually can improve your lung function to some extent. So pulmonary rehabilitation for a subgroup of people definitely helps. What sort of... Uh, uh rehabilitation do you do to help build actually, strength in the lungs? It's actually high intensity exercise. Uh, so it's a, a, a certain number of weeks, uh, a, a short, a, a, essentially a course that we kind of therapy put you through. It's a, under a monitored setting, so we're keeping an eye on your oxygen, your heart rate, uh, um, and we actually push you to the limit in a sense and to strengthen those muscles. It's strength training in a sense, and it actually helps you breathe. Uh, and so it, it, can, it, can, it can improve your lung function. Extent. You're giving your lungs a workout. Pretty much. All right. Well, uh, uh, a lot of people may uh, get confused with the difference between asthma and COPD. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between the two? What, is, what exactly is asthma? First of all, asthma can present with COPD, so people can have both. Uh, but uh, uh, just by definition, so uh, COPD, like I said, it's more of a progressive decline. It's often one of the key things. It's got irreversible lung injury, and so you can't reverse them back to normal. Um, versus asthma, um, it's a lot of irritants, and you can have some injury to your lung too, but it often can revert back to normal. So you can actually take someone who's an asthmatic, they can uh, present similarly, uh, symptoms are similar, you can be wheezing, you can be coughing, but their lung function will actually often revert to normal, and they will feel better between their episodes. For those uh, people that are at risk uh, for COPD, uh, when is it time to see your doctor, uh, particularly a pulmonologist like you? I think. Uh, um, you know, early symptoms uh, such as a cough that doesn't go away, a lingering cough would be key, um, wheezing, a little short-winded at times, it may come and go, um, uh, coughing, uh, coughing up blood, obviously, uh, a weight loss, fatigue, uh, these kind of symptoms, and especially if you smoke, uh, those kind of, those are kind of the, the, the kind of the red flags, if you may, of a potentially earlier disease that may be starting. And I'm guessing that a lot of your patients that that uh, do have COPD uh, are currently probably smoking, probably uh, a little bit hesitant to come in to see the doctor because they don't want to quit yeah, smoking. Yeah. Uh, but it's really necessary to, to prevent this, right? It is. I, I think uh, you know the key the key in a disease that's incurable, that's progressive, that's silent, is to stop the offending agent. And it's easier always easier said than done. But I think I can't stress that enough. Is just smoking cessation is, is really important. It actually we know that buys you more birthdays. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you uh, if uh, and, and people have studied this uh, quite extensively, it's never too late to quit. And we, we can't stress that enough because even if you, if you quit at any age, you still can modify your life expectancy, uh, belong your life. So, uh, and that's, that's, that's kind of the, the, the most important thing I can stress. Fantastic. Well, unfortunately, we are all out of time, but I'd like to thank our guest today, Dr. Sonny Kosa, Mayo Clinic Health System pulmonologist, for joining us today on Speaking of Health. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jason. Have a great day, everyone.
and be healthy.